Well, howdy. How's it going? Today's distraction for your social distancing efforts is a truck we are really excited to share with you. It is the latest and greatest in the Reformer series of one-off that we do here at Icon. It's a 1970 Ford short bed. Kind of a cool story. We originally found it on, I think it was a Craigslist find. And uh, it was original paint, original everything, looked really good. And we were thinking this would be the ideal derelict. Well, one of our clients agreed with us, quite fortunately. So he bought it. So he was going to put it around stock for a while until we had time to do the build. But after a while, we said, all right, bring it back. We're ready to get started. He says, you know, I absolutely love this thing. It steers, stops, rides like hell, but I love it. And I can't wait for its transformation. And at that point, he also changed his mind and decided to build it as a reformer. So to be honest, at first I was actually kind of bummed out about that because the patina was super cool and I don't know, it's just the way my brain was picturing the project. But pretty quickly I fell in love with the idea as well. And what's fun with the reformers is it also gives us a little bit more freedom to be creative with, you know, things that we're going to redesign because, you know, if you're building a derelict, there's a lot of constraints, you know, without altering the paint and on and on that mean we can't go as crazy as we sometimes want to. So in this case, we went as crazy as we darn well pleased and we are thrilled. Probably the biggest change in ride and drive quality from before and after of, is it fair to say? Yes, I think it is fair to say of any vehicle we've built. Like it is so smooth, it's so precise and it just makes you smile. did this in the stock color palette, which, I mean, come on, why mess with it, right? It's perfect. I mean, as long as you're into groovy colors of the 70s and 60s, like I am. So color palette is stock. The majority of the exterior trim is stock. However, you'll notice what used to be the, um, I think it was sport custom badges on those rear quarter panels. Um, we thought it'd be kind of fun to take the original typeface, take that font language, and then recreate it to depict icon custom. So that was fun, we did that. Other than that, really all the bright work on the outside is stock, other than we spent a hell of a lot more hours than they did on the original factory production line, actually getting those things to affix to the body correctly and to align well. Oddly enough, you know, we had to redrill a lot of the belt line trim to get it aligned because even from the factory, everything was a little skewy skewy. So is what it is. So for power, we are running the Mustang GT Coyote 5 liter aluminum fuel injected V8, kicking out around 420 horsepower and about 390 something for the torque. Plenty of power, works really nice in this configuration. Exhaust system was built by our partners at Borla. So it's all food grade mandrel bent TIG welded stainless steel. This is the quieter of the two systems that we've engineered with them for this Coyote engine, running a uh, resonator after the primary muffler. It's a loud motor no matter what you're gonna do, but keeps it tame ish for the transmission we're running the ford aod automatic with overdrive and then we're running all that power through the atlas twin stick shift on the fly part-time four-wheel drive transfer case it's the highlander case so that's a 3.5 ratio in low range and one to one in high range we didn't do lockers on this one because it's not really going to be a trail duty sort of truck. We did do the Dynatrack axles, the rear being a Dana 60, the front being a 44 based unit with superior fine spline axles and all other possible internal upgrades. The housings are new all the way down to the castings. The brakes are the Icon Brembo Sport brakes. Those are Hydro Boost assisted and they feature six piston front calipers and four piston rear, plus a dedicated parking brake 
in the rear as well. Also, due to the stance of the truck by design, it's pretty tall to get in and out of. So we kind of had three choices, either a step ladder, a stirrup, or integrated amp research lid power steps. I think we made the right decision. The steering wheel is original to the truck, fully restored. It has been fit onto a custom I did it column, which allows the tilt functionality, which is a nice value added there. Originally, the truck would have come with lap belts. As you can see, we have upgraded it to three point belts. We reinforce the B pillar to properly hold those belts, the pivot points. And then we color match those seat belts to match the rest of the interior trim. The interior trim. Well, that's another pile of fun design joy. So, gosh, where do I start? Let's start with the parchment vinyl. It is not parchment vinyl. However, we worked with our buddies at Relicate, so it has the surface texture, grain, and color that you are familiar with from the original factory Ford vinyl interior. But now the tactile and the olfactory senses are seriously elevated because it's a really nice high-end leather and it has a really good touch and feel to it. Now the textile inserts, this truck originally did have textile inserts on this seat. So we, we liked that, but again, we, we were looking for opportunities to elevate it. So we worked with one of our common uh, co-conspirators on interior textiles, a company called Maharam. So this fabric is actually intended for outdoor patio furniture, which is great because that means dry rub rating, microbial, bacterial, UV stability is all way better than what's deemed acceptable in the automotive sector. And it's just step above, but still has like that kitsch retro funky goodness, which we dig, as does the carpet. The carpet has that sort of funky two-tone modded sort of yellow tan situation. And then we use the leftover leather scraps to hem the perimeter. Uh, it has removable mats. The entire carpet system, in fact, is using the vintage Rolls-Royce hidden one-sided snaps for serviceability. So if you need to get to harness trunks or something that are run under the carpet, you can get to it down the road if needed. Also, that allows us to run multiple layers of sound deadening products, extreme liner, dynamat quilting, some aerospace shields. There's also a heat shield between the sheet metal trans tunnel and the transmission on the bottom side of the body, which helps bring down drivetrain noise and radiant heat. For the door panels, we did something very similar to the original design. In fact, the outdoor bezel and the painted insert is factory. However, the armrest, we preferred this one over the factory one, and this one is actually stolen from the Ford Bronco of the same era. Now we did hand stitch and leather wrap that to improve its sort of touch and feel. And then we left this with old school analog windows. So it's manual up down windows with new factory cranks. And then we did the nice chrome spears we like to do on our door panels. So that breaks up a little bit and then the rest of it is a combination of the leather and the textile from the interior. Now, headliner, it's pretty damn cool. Why screw with it? It's dead stock. Yep, it's basically cardboard, but it's a cool surface. We left it alone, just put a brand new one in there and partied on. Unfortunately, the dash pads are not supported for this generation truck yet. At least I think I'm correct with that fact. Um, either way, when possible, I actually prefer to work with just dashes and they'll do it custom. It costs about 10 times more than an off the shelf aftermarket one from some place that doesn't really care and has never seen the original vehicle. So the fit and finish, I find um, the guys at just dashes just get it and it's just better. And I promise not to say just again because it is a slippery slope and I could fall into that easily. See, I didn't do it that last time and I could have. So, uh, gauges, 
Uh, as you are already aware, we often work with our friends at Dakota Digital. So this is a Dakota Digital Dash module. It fits into the stock enclosure. It keeps a very vintage stock aesthetic, but it's LED backlit and it features lots of functionality that the original Ford designers never even could have dreamt of. So we can do quarter mile, we can do zero to 60. We can do multiple trip meters. You have uh, metric, you have all sorts of different ways of reading information and it tells you just about everything you need all the way through to the simple stuff such as integrated four-wheel drive light, parking brake warning, check engine light, high beams and all that but still keeping it like really smooth and retro. Now the rest of the dash looks to be stock but none of it is with the exception of the AM radio. And even then I lie. So it's the original AM radio housing, fascia and all that, but we disassembled it and repurposed it. So now really all it is, is on, off in volume and then bass. And it is driving a Bluetooth dependent digital sound process audio system featuring focal audio speakers, amplifiers, uh, hidden bass hiding behind the seats and really nice and full sound. There's a dual port uh, fast rate USB charger integrated under the dash and then we stitched a little leather pocket at the center front face of the seat. It's a quick stash spot for your wallet, phone and the like. We asked the client if he wanted a cup holder slash center console situation and he did not so it does not. You'll notice the speaker grills in the front kick vent areas, kind of retro funky. We just had a little bit of fun with that, crafted those in stainless steel and painted steel. But the idea of thinking kind of like old school Morant's home audio from around 1970, but then hiding behind this seat. Uh, we didn't bother like retro dressing any of the hardware for the audio, just kind of left it back there because it is what it is and you don't really see it. Seat frame is dead stock, although we did take some liberties with the quality and the sculpting of the shape on the seat of foam. Underneath that AM radio from the factory, that would have been your slider mechanisms to control the factory heater and vent function and defrost, none of which worked very well. We thought that that would be a nifty spot to integrate a center dash AC vent, so we did so. That uh, was a lot harder than we thought it was going to be, which seems to be a theme in my life. So we did everything from a laser scan of the mounting service to multiple 3D printed design iterations for check fit. So we finally got it to a happy place. And then we in-house CNC'd it and had it chrome plated. And the shaping of it is picking up the design theme carried by the main gauge clusters so those spears and the way it terminates and the facets and the bezel and all that and i'm really happy with it i think it's turned out nice wipers headlights fan vent and temp those appear to be stock again there's sort of an evolved reinterpreted version of the stock design um i cheated i kind of used stuff from my old school bronco because well it seemed appropriate and then the overdrive switch for the dash uh, control is to the far left. And then we didn't use the usual icon ignition switch. We kind of like the chunky old Ford key and bezel. So we integrated that just merely with all new internal components. Moving back to the exterior, we kind of like these funky old 70s Dumbo tow mirrors. So we left them. We didn't leave them, we meticulously took them apart, restored the piss out of them, polished the hell out of them, put all new rubber, all new glass, and put them back together and put them on the truck. We were originally kind of tempted to go back to the original ones that uh, were featured in the original brochures and stuff for these trucks, but these were a very popular mirror back in the era and they work really well. I'd say my only complaint is a little bit of wind noise coming out of them at freeway speeds, but it's totally worth it because the visibility rocks. And again, it's just so like 70 retro, cool aesthetic, and I dig it. The wheels on the truck, they were one-off made for this vehicle based on existing trusted wheel geometry from my other projects. Obviously, the goal was to emulate the styling of the original steel wheel, and then we fit uh, some vintage Ford hubcaps onto them. 
They are forged aluminum. They are 18 inch to make room for the big old Brembo's. Some people hate it, but you'd still wish you had them. If I'd left 15s on here, and you rear-ended the Prius that was answering his text. However, with the 18s and hydro-boosted Brembo, it stops when you want it to stop with no complaining and with immediacy. So personally, I think that utility over that design goal is definitely something I've considered, and I'm comfortable with where we landed on it, so it is what it is. Of course, BF Goodrich, my favorite tire company, running the BF ATs, they just have that good retro, kind of like squared off corner boxy look, and they're nice and quiet, very versatile, and the performance rocks the house. Now, when we took this body apart for restoration, we were shocked. There was a lot more rust than we thought there was. Apparently, it's something that this generation of Ford cabs are quite prone to. So there was extensive corrosion on the underside, and as we really got into it, yeah, it's all fixable, like we can do that, we know how to do that, but man, it would have just been a shameless hemorrhage of my client's money. So we bought what looked to be a crappy, but had really good integrity, long bed truck with a blown motor, and it was cheaper just to buy a whole nother truck to steal its cab, and it actually also supported us by donating a bunch of other smaller bits that we needed as well. Because these are so rust prone, we have done this also with the Icon Bronco program. We have now started powder coating the raw bodies when they are in white metal after we have silica blasted them. So that way you're getting chemical and mechanical tooth. So after all the heat related body work is done and all welding torches have been put back away, then we hammer it out, get it pretty hammer dolly smooth, powder coat it, back to the body shop, then for surfacing blocking conventional fillers, then a full conventional prime, then a full sealer, then paint, then the other paint, and then clear coat after all of that. So it is a two-stage system that helped us get a beautiful transition between the white and cream sections without you being able to physically feel a line, which I don't know, am I the only one who's bugged by that when you can do that on a car? I mean, kind of a goober, most of it's covered up by the belt line trim, but it's just one of those little things, it's nice. Same with lighting, we left the lighting very stock, but it's all LED, but all with circuit board panels, not like modern techno stuff on the face of the lights. Another thing that I've seen just in the last couple of years, modern car companies start to do, but I've been doing in my personal pickup trucks for decades, I always am pissed when there's no lighting in the bed. Or if there is lighting, it's that light on the back of the cab where your center high mount third brake light is, and all that does is blind you as you're trying to look inside of your bed. So we added a factory Ford sensor down low on the tailgate, same circuit that's used for the front doors. And then we installed these, you won't see them, you'll just see the light from them, but nice high output, multiple pinpoint diode LED bars that are 3M epoxied underneath the side sills. We also added, there's these two weird holes in the vertical bed pocket rails, which I assume are probably anchor points. If we're gonna do like old school cattle guards or whatever, we're not going to, client's not gonna. So we repurposed that hole. We got lucky it actually happened stock to be the exactly same diameter as the reverse light that we designed for the Thriftmaster. So a little Chevy Ford mashup there. I hope you will forgive us. Oh, the travesty. What else can we cover? I got rid of those ganky, noisy, rattly chains for the tailgate, and my team designed the nice cable system. These are actually right off the shelf, and they're a great retrofit for these trucks. You'll notice we did raise the bed height. Bed height was raised to allow room for the one-of-one one Art Morrison chassis that we co-engineered with our buddies up at Art Morrison Enterprises. But the geometry of the suspension architecture is lifted pretty much directly from our Bronco because it's worked so well. So that's a radius arm front system with greasable Johnny joints. You have front and rear sway bars and you have a four bar setup in the rear. We're running Eibach coils. We're running Fox racing nitrogen charge shocks. And again, 
The ride quality is so nice for an old pickup truck. It's counterintuitive to the way the truck looks and that is a welcomed improvement in the design. Heat cured polyurea is applied to the body underside and inside prior to final assembly after final paint. This vehicle will get an IGL ceramic coating on it inside, outside, and under to preserve all of our hard work and all these finishes. Glass is the factory Ford tinted glass. So it's just got a very light green tint to it. Again, like nice subtle retro design cue. I don't know, man. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on for days about this truck. And despite the COVID crisis, we've actually had a lot of people, a lot of media reaching out that are really excited about this truck. We're going to be uh, delivering it to the client in Santa Barbara, but it's going to be remaining in Southern California, which means we will continue to have access to it. So we're going to get his gate code and garage code so we can go in and steal it whenever possible, which means hopefully you shall see more in-depth and better produced features other than my wee effort right here explaining this truck and showing it in action. Until then, dear friends, I will remind you to stay well mentally and physically. Be as conscious and as kind to everyone as you ever could be in your life. Everyone's so stressed out right now. I think it's important to remember and hopefully it's a life lesson we all take away from this and forward into the rest of our lives, remembering that no matter who you are, what you think you are, what makes you special, where you live, we're one human on one planet and we need to take care of each other. If you have any further questions about little old me and my brand, you can pick up the old school telephone and call us at 818-280-3333. You can go to the website, which is icon4x4.com. Or, of course, you're always welcome to follow us on Facebook or Instagram at icon4x4. Thank you again for your time. Be well, and I'll see you on the next one.